Hello. Greetings. So there's some of the really, yet yeah, extremely important secret within one of the writings of uh, Nikola Tesla. Everybody apparently has passed over it. They've read it, but they didn't actually get its importance because most people don't think about field theory. Constantly thinking about uh, free energy devices. <laughs> I'm not laughing at free energy devices. By the way, if you're asking a uh, modern scientist or modern physicist about the ether, um, they'll scoff at it, and it actually is kind of like, um, you know, discussing the devil in the middle of a church service. It's just, it's a huge taboo, and I do mean that literally. There are many scientists that actually confess to this fact. Some of them that, you know, have a half a mind. It's completely taboo when you talk about the ether. However, and when you talk about the ether to other people, you know, typically, you know, if they're atomists or existentialists, and I'm getting to the secret of Nikola Tesla here in a second, uh, some of the really obscure, very, very fine, like finer than uh, spider silk point that he makes, it's incredibly important. People need to make a realization of a hardcore undeniable fact when it comes to the ether. There are countless different theories of the ether. Yes? There are countless different ideas, for example, about God. And yet you have all these, you know, warring uh, different uh, religious belief systems that are completely contrary to each other. Well, they all agree, you know, to God. For example, I'm just using that as, a, as an analogy. You know, there's Maxwellian ether. There's the ether of Proclus. There's the ether of, uh, of uh, Plato. There's also, too, a different ether of uh, Philo. There's a different uh, ether of, uh, of Heaviside. Yeah, Maxwellian ether is something that Tesla was against because he actually had a unique and illogical position. James Kirk Maxwell is incredibly intelligent, but his idea about the ether is contrary to the position of that of Tesla. Tesla himself admits to the ether, but he rails against uh, James Clerk Maxwell or Maxwellian model of the ether. So that's a really, really important point. And that's not the point of this video, by the way. Talking about the ether, it's about uh, understanding fields and understanding light and understanding the difference between scalar energy and uh, that of Hertzian energy. Of course, Hertzian energy, we're talking about light too. Gamma radiation, infrared, visible light, so on and so forth. And a lot of people think that everything in physics is about uh, things that are physical, and of course fields are not physical. And of course we're talking about the word physics. The word itself means nature. You could say cosmic mechanics, but physics does not mean, you know, physical stuff that you could pick up with your hand and, you know, measure it and weigh it. And, st and that's what most people think. They think, well, if you can't measure it, or you can't see it. You know, it's not physics, it's like voodoo. There's even many YouTube channels that talk about this. They'll talk about gravity. It's like, you know, what is the medium of gravity? Well, they reify space and time, but space has no properties and time is only a measure. The only thing Nikola Tesla railed against was the idea of curved space-time, the idea that space had properties. That's the only time of any of Tesla's writings where he comes closest to foaming at the mouth at that absurd idea. And yes, I am getting to the point here on Nikola Tesla's um, little uh, hidden secret that I've never seen anybody mention. And uh, I know basically everything out there that's been written about Tesla, not everything, but virtually everything that's written, written about Tesla and the stuff that he said and actually the commentary upon same. Um, here's a little quote from Tesla, and this is not the secret. I am getting there. I'm building to that crescendo. But I really had to point out the fact that, uh, you know, just because we're talking about the ether doesn't mean we're talking about the same thing. It's like one person's God is like totally different than another person's, analogously. And this is really true about theories about the ether. Anyway, according to Mr. Tesla, the present broadcasting station, like an AM or FM broadcasting station, does not propagate Hertzian waves as always has been supposed, but acts like an ether whistle. And I've quoted this before many times. This is not the secret. You know, I consider it incredibly important. Mr. Tesla said, light cannot be anything other than a longitudinal disturbance in the ether involving, okay, there's a key word there, involving alternating compressions and rarefactions. In other words, light can be nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. Light, as I've said in countless videos, is not an emission. Sound is not an emission either. So-called speed of sound is the rate of induction or the hysteresis of the oxygen and nitrogen. So-called speed of light, which is not fixed. It goes by C, of course, 
but uh, the perturbation that we call light has different speeds, and it's not a speed at all, but we have to use that word because we're all used to using that word regarding light when it comes to glass and light and so on and so forth. This you probably already know, but there's in this uh, one uh, page long thing, and I'm not going to quote the entire page and bore you to death, but get to the key important thing of the secret uh, within this. Give you another little uh, reading of this, and I posted the whole page up on my Facebook uh, page also. Um, this appears clearly, Mr. Tesla explains, if it is first realized that there is no Maxwellian ether, there can be no transverse oscillation in the medium. And all fields are ether perturbation modalities. And I'd like to point out to you what uh, Nikola Tesla rails against, because James Clerk Maxwell developed, you know, this model of, uh, of the ether to explain electromagnetic phenomena regarding uh, light and the ether, and uh, model to which was, we refer to and developed Maxwellian field equations that had the position that uh, light was an electromagnetic uh, wave phenomena. And that's completely incorrect. This Maxwellian idea of light and the ether is uh, incorrect according to Tesla. But Tesla points out that, um, you know, without getting into all the rest of the stuff on this uh, page long, and it's only a page, you know, that uh, light involves alternating compressions and uh, rarefactions. The light itself, the actual disturbance, and this is a really fine point within which the secret of field theory really lies, and Tesla talks about it, lay, excuse me, the field, uh, field theory lay, is that light, and I've said many, many countless hundreds of times, that of course light is a coaxial circuit. You know, it's the involvement of uh, longitudinal rarefactions and compressions, transverse electromagnetic, and this together, collectively, makes up the circuit of light. That rarefaction and compression is, of course, what uh, modern scientists uh, call a photon, which has no existence if you're a hammer or a if you're a hammer everything's a nail and if you're an atomist everything's a particle so they came up with this arbitrary idea of a photon which doesn't exist at all but we have these rarefactions and compressions these torsional uh, manifestations the demanifestations upon which different field modalities manifest and of course we actually have uh, the reason why uh, we have c this is the hysteresis of the ether this is the rate of uh, induction or propagation of the phenomena that we call light. But that transverse electrical magnetic regarding light is the reason why there is a hysteresis, but also, too, it is part and parcel to the circuit of light. But the circuit of light is not the light itself. He's actually saying, and I'm trying to find this particular nuance here to explain it to you, to make it really simple so that, you know, your eyeballs don't cross, that the phenomena of the transverse electrical magnetic is not the light itself. The really easiest way to explain this, and I wanted to come up with the, you know, the, the best way to elucidate this with the correct understanding is to talk about the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, which is 100% undeniable, and nobody, after these many years of talking about some, has even come close to refuting it. It's 100% irrefutable, the actual geometry of magnetism. Of course, it's a torus. The geometry of the dielectric is the hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape. And of course, the, the lowest field pressure mediation between those two, at which something exists, of course, is the plane of inertia. It's not a third geometry. It's the hysteresis, or the still point, and you can actually see this underneath the ferro cell. Um, where different energy manifestations occur uh, as far as the coaxial circuit of light and this is where we actually get into making a, a combination because mother nature is really simple a combination of a hertzian energy phenomena as in the case of light gamma visible light and scalar radiation uh, and what we call cosmic rays or nikola tesla's death rays it goes by uh, different names there's also two a reason why and there are countless videos on youtube actually showing uh, that uh, signals will propagate at 1.6 times, been measured at 1.8 times the so-called speed of light, or C, from Tesla coils. And the reason for this is that's actually scalar energy. And this is the thing that's confounded people for so long, instantaneous action at a distance. It also, too, explains gravity. You actually have two different types of energy phenomena, which are ultimately one, and I've said this a thousand times in a thousand different videos, that magnetism is the dielectric field. Yes, yeah, the loss of that energy or inertia manifests the toroidal geometry, the three-dimensional force vector of center vehicle force divergence of the magnetic field. Magnetism is that word we give to dielectricity when it loses energy, just as ice is the word we give to cold water. But, you know, any little ignorant child knows that ice and water 
are the same thing. What Nikola Tesla makes reference to, and people have read this for many, many, many years, but they've never made note of its importance, and the actual sentences around this is where Nikola Tesla says that uh, the transverse electrical magnetic are um, involved with the compressions and rarefactions in the case of light. This would be like a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms or bobbing up and down in the water, where the person themselves is different from the water. However, the phenomena itself of the person under perturbation is actually causing movement of the actual medium. In that case, we actually have to unfortunately draw the additional analogy where the person is just a different expression, energy modality, than the water that he's bobbing up and down in or flapping his arms in anyway. The distinction between scalar energy and Hertzian energy, Hertzian energy of course being light, gamma radiation, everything in the electromagnetic spectrum, is only differentiated out, and this is the important point, between where the energy source is from. Yeah? In the case of any form of electrical magnetic or Hertzian radiation, it is already in a spatial dimension in which the energy is released. Spatial energy begets spatial energy, and in the case of light. There's a reason why Tesla, um, Tesla coil um, uh, field circuits where you actually do a spike in energy and it's measurable and there are many videos like this on YouTube. You could look them up. They will propagate at one point and they actually make this demonstration. There's nothing faster than light, right? Well, here you go. You actually pass it through multiple Tesla coils and because it's so fast to actually get any reading of it at all. And uh, I think the fastest has been measured by anybody using a, a highly efficient Tesla coil, a series of them, was something like 2.5 times C. In other words, 2.5 times the speed of light. But once again, light is not a speed. So the distinction is where the energy manifestation occurs. Does it occur in counter space, where the energy disturbance exists, in which case we have no transverse electrical magnetic component? We don't have a Hertzian energy phenomena. Yeah. Or does it, enter, uh, does it uh, begin the energy release or emission in the force and motion uh, toroidal vector of what is already manifest? Anything that is a spatial energy release will manifest spatial energy, whether that be a kinetic chemical or uh, in the case of a light bulb, uh, in the case of a, a laser is already spatial. All these phenomena are spatial. The only thing Nikola Tesla's quote-unquote death ray, and that's just um, Tesla himself uh, used that word, and of course that's the big hype. People love to say, oh, Nikola Tesla's death ray. It's a reference to a scalar energy device, which is actually releasing energy. And counter space, I know, is such a ridiculous word, but it is initiating the energy release at the center of the dielectric. You could say that's at the plane of inertia. You could say at the apex of a hyperboloid. Now there's something that people have a hard time picturing unless you're actually very, very familiar with three-dimensional spatial geometries. Once again, a hyperboloid is an hourglass shape. At the apex of a hyperboloid, have you ever seen like a sand hourglass, which is a hyperboloid shape, and you turn it upside down, the sand pours through this tiny, tiny, tiny little constrictor, and then of course you only take a half an hour to drain the sand or an hour to drain the sand. Um, at the apex of a hyperboloid would be that finest little constrictor point right there, except something infinitely finer in counter space with no Cartesian value. That is where the energy is being emitted, and that is the reason why there is no transverse component in scalar energy, or Nikola Tesla's death ray, case of cosmic radiation. It is very, very, very simple. The only thing one needs to understand, and I could teach it to a 10-year-old, even though a lot of this energy phenomena and field geometry and field theory stuff gets, makes most people eyes cross, is to teach them the conjugate geometry, which is no different than talking about the yin and the yang of the universe, of the hyperboloid and the torus. So, I posted the entire uh, page up on uh, Nikola Tesla's, I mean, excuse me, on my Facebook page. I can also, too, post it uh, up on... Uh, on uh, the um, Instagram, if you like. Um, but people are always refuting or positing the ether. It's like, well, which model of the ether are we talking about here? There are many models of the ether that Nikola Tesla himself vociferously says are wrong, but that's not going after the ether itself, the S out of the essence of that which we deem the ether, this non Cartesian true original definition of the term inertia. Yeah. 
it's not going against that. It's going against the false model of the ether. That's what people really never mention. The ether was, I've heard this countless thousands of times. Oh, the ether was disproven by blah, 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 blah. The Michaels and Morley experiment, which didn't disprove the ether at all. It's like, which model of the ether are we talking about here? Yeah, I know you got an idea of the ether, but is your, here's the Maxwellian model of the ether, the uh, Platonic model of the ether, the Philo model of the ether. Einstein himself had his own model of the ether. You can look that up if you don't believe me. But uh, light is phenomenal. Gravity and scalar are torsional. This also, too, answers... And I really want to make this point and bring it uh, down here to the nitty-gritty of the stuff that uh, you know, makes people go, hmm, when they think about that when they're taking a shower or a bath. The scalar, of course, comes from counter space. What it comes from is actually the apex of the dielectric. The apex of the dielectric is the apex of the hyperboloidal energy release. Is uh, in ether origin, ether origin ener energy release. Hertzian, of course, or light comes from spatial energy release. Scalar comes from the plane of inertia, the dielectric, or once again the apex of the hyperboloidal. Light comes from phenomenal energy. Scalar or gravity comes from ether torsion. Gravity is nothing other, and <clears throat> let me make this really simple. I'll give you something to think about. Boil it all down to just like a little nugget of simplicity. That gravity is counter-scalar. Everybody loves to talk about scalar radiation, yeah? Scalar radiation is nothing other than a completely different type energy modality than magnetism because it has no transverse component. It didn't originate in space. Spatial energy release leads to spatial energy phenomena. Counter-spatial energy release leads to counter-spatial energy phenomena or apex dielectric. Yeah. Well, what is the opposite of magnetism. It's the dielectric, increasing inertia and acceleration. Well, what is the opposite of scalar? That would be counterscalar. Is there anything in nature that we could call, by definition, counterscalar? And it's this phenomenon right here. Gravity is counterscalar. It is literally that simple because Mother Nature is a hippie chick with dreadlocks and muddy feet and a hemp skirt and everything that goes with it, all the accoutrements. Nature is really, really simple. If one fundamentally understands that it's very root from top to bottom, front to back, the conjugate geometry of the universe, they can understand scalar radiation, they could understand light, they can understand that these transverse phenomena of light, which makes up the coaxial circuit of light, involve the rarefactions and compressions that modern ignorant science calls the photon. It's not a photon. It's a rarefaction and compression or a torsion in the ether. No. Hertzian spectrum, torsional, spatial, propagation, planar, transverse, coaxial, oscillatory, ether torsion circuit. Tesla spectrum, including gravity, because gravity is a counterscalar phenomena. Makes explaining gravity really, really simple, and it's no different than what I've been saying for years now, that gravity is point non-source specific, mutual mass acceleration towards the lowest null point between both. Objects do not accelerate towards each other, as in the case of gravity. Say there's only two objects in the universe, and they're accelerating seemingly towards each other. But they're accelerating towards a null pressure point between both. And this is very visible underneath the ferrocell. So Tesla spectrum, rarefied propagation, rarefaction compression, refractional density, compressional rarefied ether torsion, nodal to manifestation. I, I, if I actually start talking about a lot of this uh, stuff, which are some of the terms that most people don't have in their typical vocabulary, and, and you know, that's not an insult against you, but just we weren't taught how to think like that and use these terms. And the terms themselves mean nothing. Understanding is what means everything, not repeating words. You know, I'm not interested in a word salad, but you have to use specialized lexicon to refer to things here. So this makes explaining Tesla's scalar energy easy. This makes explaining gravity really easy. This makes explaining Hertzian phenomena or Hertzian spectrum. I call it Hertzian spectrum versus Tesla spectrum. Yeah, Because the one thing people love to talk about is what I've called Tesla spectrum. Our current world deals with Hertzian spectrum. Electricity measured in hertz and uh, how many volts, amps, you know, it has a propagation rate. You know, it's explainable by a, a bunch of different algorithms for propagation of energy. That's, that's all wonderful. But Nikola Tesla knew, even though he didn't express it, except he does express it, except these are so fine, they're like spiderweb silk, they're so fine, involving alternating compressions, yeah? 
I consider this extremely important, said Nick, Nick, uh, Mr. Tesla. Light can be, uh, cannot be anything else other than a longitudinal disturbance in the ether involving alternating compressions and rarefactions. These transverse phenomena that are involved with the rarefactions and compressions. He goes against, he said that uh, Maxwellian ether cannot, uh, it's not true. First realize that uh, being no Maxwellian ether, in other words, the Maxwellian model of the ether is a completely uh, illegitimate. He believes this is an error, said Mr. Tesla, Mr. Tesla, because it fails entirely, not being able to explain how a small candle can project uh, light at the same speed as the blazing sun. Once again, it's not a speed at all, it's a rate of induction, it's the hysteresis of the phenomenon itself. Anything with a transverse phenomena partakes of a hysteresis, because a transverse phenomena can only move so fast. That's like talking about two people that are trying to get from A to B, except one's following a straight path and the other one, you know, is doing this number back and forth. You know, which one's going to be a whole lot slower? Explaining instantaneous action at a distance becomes incredibly simple if you actually understand Nikola Tesla's, uh, what I call, Tesla spectrum. But everybody's interested in the phenomena of the energy release, scalar energy. Nikola Tesla's scalar energy. Well, this is fascinating but what would gravity be in simplex because gravity is not some mystical secret except in the minds of ignorant human beings of which you know involves most of the world gravity can be nothing other than counter scalar because scalar itself is ether torsional the dissipation of ether torsion is this counter torsional scalar energy that is gravity Instantaneous action at a distance makes explaining it very... You can never explain, if you have objects and particles, you can never, ever, ever explain uh, gravity. Even old Einstein, whatever you think about him one way or the other, and Te Nikola, I, excuse me, Nikola Tesla de despised Einstein, even he called this spooky because in the relativistic universe of particles where Mother Nature is a crazy chick with a bag of magic bumping particles, I call it the cult of bumping particles, explaining gravity becomes absolutely impossible. And by the way, these physicists actually believe in the ether, but since it's such a taboo, voodoo word, it really is to them. They use different words for the ether. They'll use words like... Uh, Vacuum energy, uh, quantum foam. Um, there's actually a list of about six of them. And they're nothing other than euphemisms for the term the ether. Anyway, there's all sorts of little secrets within Nikola Tesla's work. And explaining gravity and explaining Nikola Tesla's scalar becomes really a lot simpler if you look for, for the finer minutia of what Nikola Tesla is saying. This is from an interview, I believe, from, oh, I forget which, I actually clipped it off the bottom here, but it's from the book of uh, Tesla Said, which is a collection of Tesla's uh, sayings. You could actually get that free online. So, anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it cleared some things up. Thank you so much for watching.